Hello, welcome to Einstein's Mechanics. In this episode, we are going to talk about parallel plate capacitor or parallel plate capacitors. So, we've talked about capacitors in the previous episode, and we know that capacitors are able to store charges. And in this episode, we are going to look at the practical aspect of capacitors. So every capacitor or capacitors have parallel plates. And as you can see in the figure, we have two parallel plates. So this part is plate one and opposite to it is also plate two. Are we okay? And these plates are being divided into two by a red part and this part is what we call dielectric or dielectric material are you okay so to construct a parallel plate capacitor you must get the parallel plates and being separated by a dielectric material are you okay and this dielectric material is an insulator that is between plate one and plate two. So now this dielectric material should come with a permittivity. We have what we call permittivity. In order to construct that, I will call it that. That's the symbol for permittivity. Are you okay? So now. Plate 1 and plate 2 are being divided by a dielectric material with permittivity epsilon. Are you okay? So, we also have, these are metal plates. Please pay attention to the construction of a capacitor. So, these are metal plates with area. We can call the area A. So, plate 1 has an area A, the same thing plate two has an area A, are we good? Now, when we say the dielectric material, which is the red part, the separation between plate one and plate two has a permittivity epsilon. What does it mean to say permittivity? So this is what it means. Permittivity of a dielectric material, that is the red part, the separation between plate one and plate two, Permittivity is the ability. So you must have a material to form a dielectric, and that material should have the ability to allow electric flux to be established in it. In it. Remember, we are talking about capacitors, and their main function is to what? Store what? Charges. So charges are being stored. And during the construction, you are going to take a dielectric material which should have the ability to let that electric flux to be established in it to make the storage of the charges possible. Are we okay? So now we have our capacitor. We also have the distance of the separation, the dielectric material. We know the thickness of it. So we will call that as what? D. So we know the area of the plate as A. We know the separation between plate 1 and plate 2 as D. These are physical dimensions that is going to help us in the construction of the capacitor. Are we okay? So now, what do we know? Previously, we know that for a capacitor like this, its capacitance can be C, can be the charge on the voltage, right? We know this from the previous episode. So capacitance is charge on the voltage or the potential difference. But when you look at the diagram or when you look at the figure, we are basing our analysis on the physical dimensions of the capacitor. Do you understand? So here we want to consider what happens when I construct a capacitor with an area A with thickness of the dielectric D. 
what happens to the capacitance. So we are not going to follow the charge, we are not going to follow the potential difference, but we want to establish a relationship between the capacitance with the area and with the distance D between the two plates. So here we are going to consider these dimensions. We are going to consider the surface area, the surface area of plates. That's the A, that's the area of the two plates. We will also consider the spacing, that's the distance, the spacing between the plates. And when you check from the diagram, the spacing is what we call the D, the thickness of the dielectric material. And we saw that this dielectric material has a property, what we call permittivity. So we will also establish the relationship between the capacitance and the permittivity of the dielectric, the permittivity. These are physical di dimensions or quantities that we will be establishing the capacitance from of the material. So this is the permittivity. Are we okay? So we have three parameters that we are going to establish the capacitance from the first equation that's the equation one we know how to establish it but if it comes to the physical quantities let's look at how we can establish the capacitance now from here the capacitance of the parallel plate capacitor is equal to or let's first establish the relationship from a proportional sign. So we can say capacitance from the figure is proportional to the area of the capacitor and inversely proportional to the distance between the plates. So meaning from the figure over here, as you increase the area of the plates, so let's say if this plate is extended, the area is what increased, then the capacitance of the capacitor is going to be increased from the pro proportional sign that we see. The same thing if the distance D, that's the distance between plate one and plate two, if it is increased, then the capacitance is going to what? decrease because they are inversely what? proportional. So we must always find a very reasonable distance that's a dielectric material with what a reasonable distance d or thickness d between the plates are we okay so now we know the relationship between capacitance area and the distance between the plates this means that we must get C should be equal to a certain constant, which is what we call, this constant becomes the permittivity of the dielectric epsilon area and the distance. So this is the capacitance of the capacitor. When we consider the physical quantities area and the distance between the plates, this is our equation two. Where area we know is the area of the plate, D is the distance, and epsilon is the permittivity of the dielectric material. That's the insulator between plate one and plate two. But how do I get the epsilon? Remember, epsilon is also given from the expression. We can get the epsilon from this expression, which is epsilon naught and epsilon r where the epsilon naught is called the permittivity of free space so permittivity permittivity of free space and epsilon r is the relative permittivity So 
epsilon r is the relative permittivity and this is also the permittivity of free space so now we can bring this epsilon naught and epsilon r in place of what the permittivity itself in equation two remember the value of epsilon naught is a constant and that is giving us 8.85 to the power negative 12 and the unit is farad per meter but the epsilon r which is the relative permittivity it differs from material to material it differs so from the question that will be given depending on the material it will have its own relative permittivity that one for air is different from mica and it is also different from wood and it is different from any other material such as let's say paper are you okay so you pay attention when you multiply the epsilon naught which is the permittivity of free space which is constant and 8.85 to the power negative 12 by the relative permittivity of any given material you're going to get the permittivity of the dye electric are you okay so from here meaning we can further write the equation this way let's look at how we can write it our capacitance c can then be equal to in place of the permittivity that will be epsilon naught and epsilon r multiplying the area by the distance so this is also the equation three for our capacitor so now when you check this equation what it means is we are only considering capacitor with what two plates pay attention anytime you see this equation meaning the capacitor or the capacitor we are talking about has two plates what if we have n number of plates n number of plates how do we write the capacitance equation so in a situation where we have n number of plates the capacitance of the capacitor is going to be now the same equation epsilon naught epsilon r multiplying n minus one that means the number of plates mentioned minus one multiplying the area on d which is the distance between the plates so we also have this equation pay attention to the two equations that is equation three and equation four they are the final equation to calculate for the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor so from equation three that is for two plates so remember even if we have the n minus one it will be two minus one giving us one one multiplying everything is still the same are we okay so if it is two or three or more then we are going to introduce our n minus one so let's try some examples under this and see how we can apply our formulas example one a parallel plate capacitor has plates of area so straight away i'll write my parameters and we start solving it has plate of area 10 centimeter square so my a which is the area is equal to 10 centimeter square and remember we must work in meter square so changing from centimeter square to meter square we are going to divide it by 100 square and that is going to give us 1 to the power negative three meter square are we okay so the capacitor has area of 10 centimeter square which are 0 0.2 meter apart so the parallel plates are being separated by a dielectric with thickness 0 point so that is our d right so d is 0 0.2 millimeters and we must also work in meters as well so changing from 0 0.2 to meters that is going to give us two to the power negative four 
meters. Find its capacitance in A and also find its capacitance with mica or mica of relative permittivity six between the plates. So now we also have the permittivity in free space, which is epsilon naught as 8.85 is a constant. So even if you are not given, we should have it off head farad per meter. Now, looking at this, we are not given any n number of plates. So we assume this is two plates capacitor. Are we okay? So from the first part, we are also going to write our relative permittivity for air. So I'll consider relative permittivity for air is also, mostly we run it to one, but it is 1.0006. Are we okay? And that one for mica is given. So that's for mica and that is also given as well. Six. Are we good? So let's try to solve the problem. Now with these parameters, we know our capacitance is given as epsilon naught, epsilon r, and area on D. Are we okay? So the first part we are considering capacitance in A. That is going to give us our 8.85 to the power negative 12 multiplying in a the relative permittivity it is not given in the question but it is one mostly we do it one but the actual figure is 1.0006 so you can bring that is 1.006 multiplying the area now we also know the area to be one to the power negative three and everything over the distance or how the dielectric is separating the two plates and that is also given as d and d is 2 to the power negative 4. Now when you use your calculator to punch this your capacitance of the capacitor if it is air separating them then that is going to be 4 4.27 times 10 to the power negative 12 farad. And that is the same thing as 44.27 pico. You know, from prefix, 10 to the power negative 12, that's pico, so pico farad. Let's look at the B part. If it is separated by mica, then how do we get the capacitance? So now capacitance, this is from mica, from the formula, the epsilon naught is the same, which is 8.85 to the power negative 12. And the relative permittivity of mica was given in the question as 6. The same plate of area 1 to the power negative 3. And the same distance between them, that is also 2 to the power negative 4. And with this, your calculator is going to give you values of 265.5 to the power negative 12 farad or simply you can get 265.5 pico farad so this is for example one let's look at the second example in this episode so let's look at it now example two two plates are charged to have a potential difference of 200 volts. Each has an area of 0.1 meter square, and they are separated by 0.5 of A. Calculate the electric charge on each plate. This is very simple, but you need to apply more than one formula. So here we are to calculate the electric charge, that is Q. First, let's write down our parameters that will help us to know what to use. It says the capacitors are being charged to a potential difference, that's our voltage V, as 200 volts. Each has an area, so the area of the plates 
is also given as 0 0.1 meters square. So it is in meters, there's no need to change. Now the distance, the separation between the plates, that's our D, it is 0 0.5 millimeter. So we have to quickly move this to meter or meters. That is going to be 5 to the power negative 4 meters. Are we okay? And we also have our epsilon naught, which is the permittivity in free space. That is 8.85 to the power negative 12 farad per meter. So these are our parameters. And we are to calculate for electric charge. That is Q. We don't know. We also don't know the capacitance of the capacitor. We also don't know. But do you remember the formula C is equal to? Let's have this formula. Let's. Our capacitance is equal to charge on the voltage. So we already have the voltage. Can we calculate the capacitance from the physical quantities? That's the area and the D. And we also know that here our C is going to be given as epsilon naught epsilon r a on d here we are talking about two plates so there's no need to introduce the n minus one formula here so we also know that the separation is by air such that the relative permittivity of air is going to be 1.0006 so straight away we can put in this to get our capacitance from the capacitor this is going to be 8.85 to the power negative 12 by that of A, 1.0006, and the area 0 0.1 divided by the distance, which is also given as 5 to the power negative 4. And by calculation, this capacitance is going to be 1.771. To the power negative 9 farad. So now from the physical quantities we have the capacitance of the capacitor. So we can use the formula over here as charge on voltage to also calculate for charge. From this equation, let me call it equation 1. From equation 1, our charge, that's Q, is going to be CV and we already have our C as 1.771 to the power negative 9. Multiplying the V, our voltage is given as 200 volts. And when you punch this on your calculator, we are going to get 3.542 times 10 raised to the power negative 7 coulombs. So if you want to work in prefix, this is the same as 0. 3542 micro coulomb. Are you okay? So, this is the charge on each capacitor. Thank you for watching this episode. Kindly subscribe to the channel, share the video, and drop your comments. See you in the next episode.